and welcome to today's free training Thursday. I have Sam Saab here with me today, and he will be taking us through maintaining lookup tables in Result CRM. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the side panel, and we'll get to them at the end if we have time. Without further ado, I'll turn <coughs> it over to Sam, and he'll take us through his presentation. Thank you very much, Amanda. Thank you, everyone, for being on the call today. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to be uh, using the current version of um, Result, the shipping version, which is version 18.0, uh, to, um, uh, to go through the uh, lookup table maintenance. So at this point, uh, please confirm, um, Amanda, that you're seeing the login screen. Yes, confirmed. Awesome. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's get into the results product. So first, let's talk about what lookup tables are and where we maintain them. So from a maintenance perspective, and please keep in mind, this is this requires a security setting of management or administrator for the user that's able to make changes to lookup tables. And they will access the lookup tables and do the changes to them from the setup menu up here. If you look in the left side of the menu, there's an area that says maintain lookup values and these are grouped by section. We're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. And under each section, there's a list of the actual lookup tables uh, for each of those uh, uh, business areas of results. Let's talk, though, first about what really is a lookup table. And I'll give you some examples of those. Let's pretend to be adding a contact record. So I want to contact clicked on add. I'm going to show you a few examples of what we call uh, lookup tables. You've used them, but you might not have used that term before. So if you go to the area of the record where you're able to select who you're going to assign the account to, who's responsible for this contact, there will be something called an assign to. And if you click on this drop down, you will see a listing of what's acceptable, what would be the acceptable values for that entry. That's <clears throat> that listing, that drop down, is managed by a lookup table. Another example of a lookup table would be the contact sources. Where did you meet them? How did you get to how did they get to know about your company for them to be calling or, or requesting information to be added to the database? In that case, the contact source is a different type of lookup table because this one is organized by a hierarchy. And so it's grouped together. So let's say, for example, you know that this was uh, introduced to your company as a referral. Then you can click on the referral item. And within that, there's multiple types of referrals, referral from a client, referral from a vendor. In your case, by the way, keep in mind, this is just sample data. In your case, you can have also referral from a partner or a contractor. So there might be more than the values listed up here in the sample listing. And so you would select, in this case, let's say referral from client will be the value selected. Here's another type of a, a drop down or lookup table. And in this case, what we've done is we've automatically opened up all the items for you. That doesn't mean you cannot collapse the area. So let's say you don't use this or you don't use the vendors or other. So <clears throat> the point here is that instead of waiting for you to open up each segment, each section like it is in the sources, uh, it is easy for you to see everything all at once and then make a selection from it. So that's the three types of um, lookup tables. If you go to the user field, I'm sorry, uh, additional info, there's something called territory. That's another type of uh, lookup table. It's a single listing of all the items that have been put in there. Again, this is sample data, so yours might look different or have different entries, but this is a single list and a person will just select uh, from that listing uh, for, um, what is appropriate for this contact record. So for us to affect uh, lookup tables, we would use the setup menu to do so. So the bottom line then is lookup tables are a way for the system to manage and give you control uh, as to what would be acceptable values in the different drop downs available in the various data entry screens of the system. This way you can control and manage what's in the uh, drop downs so that all the data entry being done is consistent. That will help you. Um, have a better experience in getting in searching for records in a consistent way, reporting on records in a consistent way, because everyone is following the same approach to uh, managing data. By the way, uh, I'm going to show you one other type of a lookup table that looks a little bit different in results. Um, 
but it's also the same idea. It's a lookup table. It's the state uh, values. So here's what I mean by that. If you go to physical address, if you notice the state does not have a drop down next to it like we did experience or see when we were looking at the assigned to and and the uh, contact type. So notice here you, you were able to engage the drop down to get to the list. On the state, we made the screen much more uh, visually pleasing without having to worry about that drop down, but the system automatically takes care of that. So if you bring your cursor over to the state field, it will automatically open up everything for you uh, without you having to click on a drop down. And as you type, let's say you want to put Virginia, you type the V, the system will automatically limit its drop down down to uh, the, the two values that might have that, and then when you select VA, you can tab out of the system. If you come back to that field and you want to make changes to it, you're able to, <clears throat> if you delete a letter or you delete both letters, then everything opens up again, or you can actually force the uh, system to show everything by clicking the Show All button, and then everything becomes available for you to select from the list without you having to type anything first. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Now let's. Now that you see what their value is and how they're used, let's go show you how to maintain them. And we're going to be discussing a few of the key lookup tables that you would use in results. So first, let's go to the setup menu and let's show you a couple more things regarding the design of the lookup tables. Lookup tables are depending on which module you're talking about. So for example, for lookup tables to uh, control the data entry on contact records, there's quite a few of them. There's the contact types that these manage uh, the, the uh, reason why the record is in the system. There's the associate type. This allows you to identify the associate records. These are the, the uh, related contact records or addresses for a certain contact, the sources, the territory. So we're going to go through a couple of those. But if you, what I want to introduce for you is that if you go to a different business area, like sales and marketing, you'll see that there's a bunch of lookup tables there that control sales opportunities, that control quotations, control documents. So one way for you to, to recognize or see how this is structured is if you look on the main menu up here where you are, have your different business areas, for contact as a main menu here, all the lookup tables that relate to data entry that's done in contacts is, is done in the dropdown for contacts here. For activities the same way. For sales and marketing, these are your sales marketing. These are sales opportunity management, quotation management. And then these are managed directly through the setup menu here. For services and projects, you're able to do that from project management that's under services and projects. They are able to manage those directly from this dropdown. For the finances, there's quite a few drop uh, lookup tables there. So you'll notice anything and everything from invoice terms, which are sometimes referred to as credit terms in QuickBooks, payment types, uh, etc. These are available to you here, and they will correspond to modules that are available through the finances uh, department or the finances section of the main menu. All right. Now that we know these, let's go in and show you how to maintain them. Again, uh, um, this is limited to um, security rights of individuals that have either the security group of management and or um, administrator. Effectively, uh, the, these are the teams that typically manage and control who can use the system, who are the users, what are their security rights. And then uh, we'll be able to also manage the uh, values in the lookup table. As a reminder, when you go to users and you're setting up, let's say, Jessica, and you're setting up the uh, security group for her, in the drop down here are the options for management and administrator. And only if you have one of those two options would you be able to manage lockup tables. So as, as the administrator of the system, you can decide who you want to give that privilege to. All right, let's go show you how you are able to maintain those and make changes to the lookup tables. Um, so all of them work the same way. So I'm going to follow through in a, on the most simple ones first, show you how to change them, and then we can go to the more complex ones that have multiple additional fields. And uh, especially on the contact types, they have quite a bit more functionality uh, available for each contact type. So let's start with the simple ones. Let's say... <clears throat> You're managing the territories, which is a simple lookup table. 
And so effectively what you're looking at here is the listing of what's already in the system in the sample database. Your list might look different and or you might want to modify these, remove what doesn't apply to your business and add some more. So um, let's say you don't do business in Canada. You are able to proceed to highlight that record on the left-hand side from the action menu up here. There was an X, the delete button. And if you're not sure what those icons do, by the way, just put your cursor on them for a couple of seconds and there'll be a tooltip, a yellow area under the button that will describe what it does. So in this case, we can delete the entry that we do not use. Well, when we, so here's something that is part of the quality assurance within the system. When you try to delete something and it's already in use, the system will let you know that that territory is actually being used. And so you cannot delete something that's already uh, been used to validate the record. So what we can do at this point is we can go to the search area and look for Canada and identify any record that's already using it. In this case, we found that Joseph Jones had already been using that. And so in this case, let's say we're not going to be continuing to maintain that. You're able to remove the territory uh, from there and maybe you want to join them with the uh, East Coast, depending on which part of Canada they're in, or just leave it empty in this example. So when I go ahead and click on Save Changes, the t that territory is no longer in use. If I go back to the contact types and attempt to delete it right now, the system is not going to push back because whatever it was used before in that single record is no longer being used. And so the system doesn't have to worry about um, removing something that was already used to validate a record in the system. By the way, there's also another way for you to have done something very similar. If you do not want to have the uh, Canada anymore as a separate entry and you want to put it under the East Coast in results, there's an entry, there's an option up here called Merge. I'll show you that later on uh, because it's a little bit more of an advanced feature, but I just want to let you know there was another way of handling this instead of going and fixing the record uh, manually like I just did. All right, let's go in also and take a look at the other uh, items that are available to you within the maintenance. You'll notice one thing that whenever you add an entry to the uh, lookup table, the code, the, the, the specific unique entry that will actually be saved in the contact record to correspond to that territory, in this case, central region or East Coast, uh, that value itself, as soon as you create it, will no longer be... Um, modifiable directly by the user. And there's a strong reason for this. Results is a network-based application. And so while you're making maintenance and changes up here, there could actually be a user from another workstation that's actually selecting that entry or making a decision based on what they see in the dropdown list itself. So what we do is we give you a tool to allow you to manage and control uh, the way the uh, the system is managing the data. So, for example, let's say here, and, and we use the word central region, east coast, west coast, but here we just use mountain. Maybe I want to add the word mountain region uh, to, to the value of the territory code. Notice I can't edit this directly. If I click on it, it's a grayed out because it's already being created and might be already in use. So what you do to modify it is just ma uh, go through the special uh, workflow. You're able to click on the drop down up here and select the fact that you want to replace that e value of mountain with another value. So let's say that value you want to replace with <coughs> excuse me, is going to be mountain region. So we're replacing, this is the new value to be replaced with. I'm going to click on the replace button and I'm going to proceed with letting the system uh, make the change. What it's going to do is going to do two things. Not only will it change the value in the lookup table here, but any place where mountain was used within the contact list, it's going to go find those records and replace them automatically. It will do a global update for you to the new value. So not only did it fix the lookup table, but it actually also fixed. And I don't know whether we have any records that are, yeah, I don't have anything like that already. So uh, had we had any records in the system, they would have been replaced between from the value of mountain to the value of mountain region because of the global update that is done. So uh, you're able to not edit directly the value after it's been created, but you would use the mechanism of replacing the value with something else uh, to accomplish 
the goal of making the change to the lookup table and making the change in every uh, other um, uh, record where that value, the old value was being used. All right, let's get in there and take a look at a few others that are a little bit more complex. So let's go to the setup menu and let's take a look at sources like we did before. So when you look at the source table, unlike the territory table, which was just two columns, the source table has a grouping mechanism or a hierarchy that allows you, remember when we were selecting a referral, how things were grouped together under referral for a bucket a called referral. And then when we selected that, we were able to see three values, client, vendor, and associate record as a referring entity to be selected. So this uh, column here, the third column, allows us to group together the different values. So when they're when you're looking at the drop down or the user is looking at the drop down, they don't have to walk through 15 uh, or, or 20 entries. They can just look at the four or five unique buckets and then select the bucket and then select from within the bucket what's applicable to what they're looking for. So um, let's go ahead and show you two things. First, what if I want to create a brand new bucket? So let's basically say we have a um, a, a, port, uh, a a card campaign that we're sending out to to uh, encourage people to um, uh, buy our product. So we're going to create a brand new bucket up here that deals with card campaigns because we're going to do one in, let's say, uh, October of 2018. We're going to do one next month in November. And we're going to do one uh, again in January. So these are three campaigns. And so you would want to know which campaign was successful or not because the offering might not be exactly the same. So in this example, I'm adding one more bucket. And so I'm going to create a brand new record. And let's call those... You can call them anything you want as long as you're consistent. So let's say we say card campaign or postcard campaign, whatever you want to call, um, whatever detail you want to put in there. And let's be call, call this card, and this would be 10 2018. Um, the main thing you're going to be putting up here is any description that will help you know what that is. So maybe we'll do something like this. <coughs> All right, so I'm going to keep it simple. I just added that value. Notice this is a unique entry up here, which is different than all the other entries in there. Let's go and take a look and see what the impact or effect on that is. I'm going to again go and try to add a contact record. And what we're saying is that if I go to the contact sources up here, you should expect to see a brand new value in the drop down. You see how we saw before mailing list, business, referral, trade show? Now we have a new campaign, a new entry because of this unique verb that, or, or words that are put in the third column. If you open that up right now, we only have the cards from October 2018 that are planned. And so I could select that. But notice how the, there was only a single entry in there. Let's go and expand on that. Let's say I want to go also and plan out the one for November and put it in the system. So one thing that I wanted to bring to your attention here is that it is important for consistency in the wording um, instead of doing the data entry manually, you take advantage of some of the tools built into the result system. Here's what I'm saying. If I have you manually add this record, let's say you weren't paying attention and you decided you're going to say card campaigns with an S at the end instead of without the S. That will end up creating a separate bucket because it's a unique verb uh, or verbiage versus the other one. So the best way to do this instead of retyping everything manually is to actually go to an entry and make a copy of that. Notice how just about everything uh, copies over in the new record you're creating. And now you can go and say card 11, 2018. And all you have to do here is change one word. So notice what it did. I played it safe out of the system, do the hard work. I'm going to resort by the buckets. And notice now we have two entries in the bucket one for October, one for November. And if I go over to the data entry from this station or any other station on the network, the lookup tables are common across the whole office. If anybody clicks on the drop down for source and goes to the card campaign, you'll notice there are now two entries in there based on what we just did a few minutes ago. All right? So this is the how easy it is to create uh, uh, new entries and how to group them under common names so that they will uh, um, sit in the same bucket or in the same hierarchy. 
Let's jump over to the contact types. That's the most complex one, and, and we'll, we'll close with that. So the contact type, not only does it have a third column like we experienced in sources. So this is, for example, when you're selecting a type of a client, and these are the group or bucket of clients all sitting here, or let's say you're deciding to pick up from a prospect or from a vendor. So these are the buckets there. But in addition to that, um, you also have a couple of additional things only in contact types. First, you have the ability when you are creating a contact type, I mean, you're creating a record with that contact type or changing a prospect to a client with that contact type, you'll notice that you have the ability to also trigger a process in results. Uh, so the ability here is then to basically have the system on its own introduce or inject a number of activities in the system that needs to be completed by the different team members in the company now that a new client has been a record has been created so it's a it's a way for the system to automatically monitor uh, a change in the contact type and whenever a certain contact type is created make sure that all the proper steps all the proper workflow is taken care of so that's called um, a process and you're able to automatically activate it using this tool up here uh, by the way uh, notice there's granularity here instead of just saying active client we basically separated out our regular clients from major accounts and we could have even though here we've kept it simple so there's a new customer onboarding and it's the same process that will be triggered for either one we could have created a unique process for major accounts because we also need them to um, get a credit application so that we can give them better terms, maybe, a, you know, net 10 or net 3 days. So the idea there is we could have had a different process based on the contact type. And so creating that granularity allows us to do more specialized processes or more unique um, user fields that are specific to that uh, contact type. The, the third thing you can do here is the customer... Uh, you'll notice the sync to QB. You can decide that these records, any records that are sitting in the client database, are to be synchronized with the customer's bucket or the, the database, you know, the customer listing in QuickBooks. In some cases, you might not wish to send the data over to QuickBooks. Let's say, for example, prospects are until they become customers, you're not going to send them to QuickBooks. So this is an example where you would go to a prospect record that you create or a contact type that for prospects that are created here. And you're simply going to go to the system and say none, as in don't send that data to QuickBooks. They don't match anything in QuickBooks. They're just going to sit in the database here. So this is a great way for you to manage this information regarding what records go to QuickBooks and what records stay in results. Typically, the approach is your prospect records until they become customers will stay in results. You work the sales process from within results. That's part of your CRM. And then when you when the prospect becomes a customer because they approve a proposal you provided or a quotation you gave them, then only then would the money be ready to change hands. And so you can send them over as a customer to QuickBooks because they are going to be connected to the customer database there. The final thing that you are able to do within contact types is to a specific contact type, you are able to go in there and tell the system that you want to override the default user fields that come with results and use your own. So let's take a quick example of that. <clears throat> So let's say for regular accounts, what you really want to do is you don't want to use the sample user fields. Let me show you what those look like. When you go to a contact record and you <clears throat> open Mike Ballack's record and go to cards and you look at the user fields up here, you'll see a bunch of uh, default uh, field names, labels that we basically ship with the product as examples of some of the people use the department where they work in, the assistant name, etc. So that's one option. But if you don't wish to use those and you want something more selective to be collected per customer a type or a client type, what you can do is the following. You go to the contact types. And on the contact types, let's say for the regular account, you do not want to use the default ones that came in with the results. You want to use your own. So maybe what you want to request is the tax ID. And then maybe what you want to do here is you're going to ask for the fiscal year end as an example. 
Uh, by the way, uh, there are different data types here. The system will try to remind, remind you what that is. Notice the letter T, that's for text. And so up to 254 characters, alphanumeric can go into this field. Same thing with all the others, all the way to six. Number seven is a numeric field. Number eight is a date field. So if you really want to uh, only select that, say maybe you want to say customer since, as an example of a date a field that you would enter in there. There are additional text fields. There's a checkbox like a yes, no. Um, so let's say you want to track whether we're going to send them a Christmas card or not, as an example. So notice I only selected four fields of interest. I don't need all the others. That's all I want to collect on a customer record. So look what's going to happen with results. When you go to results and you open up a client's regular and you go to the user fields, notice how controlled that is. Only the tax ID is being prompted for the fiscal year and the customer since and in that case, in that date, in that case, it's a date field. So you can say, well, they started with us in February and then Christmas card is a checkbox. So this is an example where the system will automatically control and change the user fields for you based on the contact type in use for this record. Notice, by the way, we did not impact or affect anybody else. So look, if you open up a vendor record and you go to the user field, nobody said that we need to change this, right? So it's limited only to the type of a uh, record you enter. Let's say you're adding a brand new record where well, the system has no way of knowing what user field you're going to do. As soon as you go and say, I'm going to use a regular account and you go try to put information in the user field, guess what? The system already knows to only prompt you for the type of field, the field labels and the fields that you wanted to engage. All right. Well, that's it for today. That uh, covers all the material uh, for the lookup table maintenance. Uh, so just to summarize, uh, we've shown you the uh, key lookup tables. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I did not, uh, it's not letting me save it because I haven't finished the information up here. So there's a minimum information, as you know. That's why you have those. Um, that's why you have those red asterisks to let you know which fields are required. So let's say this customer is uh, ABC Corp. That goes into the display name, and the contact type is the only other field. Now, if you try to save the record, the system will say no problem. And oh, by the way, remember how there was a specific process that was associated with regular clients? And this is exactly what will happen. I added a brand new record that is of a type regular client, and the system is letting me know the process was automatically triggered. What does that really mean? That means if I go to the activities listing right now, I will see at least one or more. Yeah, in this case, there were three steps as part of that process. And these have already been assigned uh, two for Mary and one for Jessica, and they need to be done by a certain cutoff date uh, based on what the design of the process itself. So in this case, just summarize uh, with the contact type being so powerful, it can control whether this record will go to QuickBooks or not. It will control whether the user fields have a different design or not. It will control whether there's a process that needs to be automatically triggered. They can always come in and trigger a manual process. You would do that, as you know, from the action menu up here. Action menu, you can always come and say, I want to activate a process. So you can manually trigger an additional one. But for the one that will be automatically done for you by the system, then that's the what will be programmed within the contact type. So a setup menu to manage all your lookup tables from here. The user has to have the proper security groups, which is management and or administrator. And then they'll be able to make modifications and changes so that all your users within the system are all working from the same uh, list of available and acceptable options in all the drop downs that are controlled by results. Thank you everyone for your time. Amanda, back to you. Thank you, Sam. Well, that wraps up today's webinar. We look forward to seeing you next week, and we hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you.